Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Learn German from Hindi and English. And today's topic is Wechsel Prepositionen, means changing prepositions. And before moving, before starting uh, my video, just want to tell you that uh, the same video I have posted last week uh, as an uh, as a Hindi version, and this is the English version. So let's get started. So guys, what are basically Wechsel preposition? The two-way preposition prepositions can take either the accusative or the dative case, and there are nine Wechsel prepositions. Wechsel prepositions are basically can come as a dative case or an accusative case. So it keeps on changing, and there are many prepositions available in German grammar, but there are only nine. Wechsel prepositions and here in this pictorial graph you can see these uh, nine prepositions so we will start one by one on the top you can see we have über so über means above so as you can see there's a big G that stands for object or gegenstander and uh, just to just to make sure that you understand uh, the prepositions I have uh, created this graphic. So uh, we have first über, then we have of, of means on top of or on to. Then at the under, uh, we have unter, unter means below or under. Then in the middle, in this uh, zero, in this uh, section, you can see in, which means inside. As you can see also that this is inside an object, okay? Then we have zwischen. Zwischen. Zwischen means between in between. So it is uh, basically between these two curves. You can remember this thing uh, in this way. Then we have for. For means in front of, before, before something, because of, or with. Yes, friends, uh, it is uh, widely used as a preposition. But in this case, uh, we are going to use it in front of. Maybe uh, other uh, meanings we can we can see in the uh, later levels like A2 or B1. Then we have an. An means at. And then just next to this G or to our object, we have neighbor. Neighbor means next to, next to something, next to some object. And at the last... Yeah, at the back side, we have hinter. Hinter means behind. Yeah? Behind behind an object. So these are the nine Wechsel prepositions that we are going to look today in this video. And uh, with some examples, I have explained them. But the categorization to understand when to use uh, these nine Wechsel prepositions in dative and in accusative case, we will see in the later slides. So let's get started. First is in the flush state in dem Kulschrank. Yes. The question is wo is was? Wo is was means where is what? Where are our objects? And we have to describe the builds. We have to describe the picture. Now, beschreiben Sie bitte die Bilder. <coughs> so first is in the flush state in dem Kulschrank. Where is our border? Hmm? Who is the flasher? Who is the flasher? Is the frage? The flasher state in dem Kulschrank. In dem we can combine this and uh, as a course form we can use uh, im also. That is also fine. If you skip in dem then im is also perfectly fine. The, the flasher state in Kulschrank. The bottle is in the fridge. Then second we have of. The bücher liegen of dem Tisch. The bücher liegen of dem Tisch. The books are on the table. Hmm? So it's uh, basically the same way as we use in English. On on top of something. Yeah? On on the table. And das Bild hängt an der Wand. The picture is hanging at the wall. We use at the wall because... Nobody can hang a picture inside the wall, right? Or behind the wall. It's always at the wall. So we use an, an der Wand. Wo is das Bild? 
where is the picture? Das Bild hängt an der Wand. Über. Die Lampe hängt über dem Sessel. Die Lampe, the lamp, hangt, hangs over the chair. Über dem Sessel. Über dem Sessel. Neben. So you can see a cheese, a piece of cheese, and the next uh, next to cheese is a mouse. The mouse sits neben dem Käse. The mouse sits next to cheese. The mouse sits neben dem Käse. The mouse sits next to cheese. Then we have unter. Das Mädchen sitzt unter dem Tisch. Das Mädchen sitzt unter dem Tisch. The girl sits under the table. So is she is just sitting the, under the table. Okay. Who is das Mädchen? Where is the girl? Das Mädchen sitzt unter dem Tisch. Zwischen. Die Maus sitzt zwischen den Flaschen. Die Maus sitzt zwischen den Flaschen. The mouse sits between the bottles. Zwischen means in between. So the mouse is uh, sitting just between in, in between the these two bottles. Yeah. Unter, hinter, sorry. Hinter, hinter mm -hmm. is behind. Das Mädchen steht hinter der Gardine. Gardine means curtains. And the girl is behind the curtains. Yeah, steht also means standing or she is there. No? The placement. Uh, state also shows a placement. Where is the uh, girl right now? The girl is behind the curtains. Okay, okay, guys. So it's a uh, it's state hinter der Gardino. And the last is for for as I said. Uh, in this case, we'll just see in front of the mouse sits for their flash here. The mouse sits in front of the bottle. So he's just sitting. There is no movement as such. So guys, these were the nine. Uh, preposition that we are going to see but in this in this particular table I have just explained the who part who question yeah the next thing also so th uh, these examples were basically in the dative case if uh, somebody has doubt now I'm going to clear I have given it uh, just for the example sake okay guys so let's get started with the real grammar the grammar is here if you can see these nine prepositions are here pl plus the dative yeah plus the dative dative case where we are going to use the dative as in so first we have to understand the question of dative is always who yes where where is the object and the second thing that we have to keep in mind is that they take the dative when there is either no movement or when the movement remains within one place. As you can see in the previous examples, the nine examples, there was there were no movement. The position was still. The magician, the girl was behind the curtains or the mouse was just sitting next to the cheese. But there was no movement as such. So, whenever there is no movement, then these prepositions will be in the dative case. We can see some more examples here. Like here, uh, in, in A part, you can see the brochure liegen auf dem Tisch. Yes, der Tisch, this is a man, masculine, as in the, English, as in the German grammar, der Tisch. And when we have, uh, when we ask the questions, wo sind die Büchers? Where are the books? The Bücher liegen off dem Tisch. The Bücher liegen. Liegen means they are lying on or the books are on the table. So in this case, their Tisch will get changed to dem Tisch. Because you know the articles get changed in that day, there becomes dem. Yes? So their Tisch will become dem Tisch. The Bücher liegen off dem Tisch. The books are on the table. You can see in the second example, das Bild hängt an der Wand. So in this case, we have die Wand, yes, the wall. But in um, intuitive case, die Wand is a feminine, uh, feminine article and it will become der Wand. Das Bild hängt an der Wand. Wo is das Bild? Das Bild hängt an der Wand. The picture hangs on the wall. The Katze liegt unter dem Sofa. Das Sofa, but here, dative, is unter dem Sofa. The cat lies under the sofa. 
Then we have also the cause form as uh, I have explained in, explained in the last uh, slide also in deem. Yes, if we combine them together, so it becomes im and deem becomes am. So this is also part of German grammar and uh, uh, maybe because because they use it uh, they uh, just to increase the fluency to, to like uh, if you say in dem it's better you say im yeah so not much of a, uh, imp very important but yes in a way it is important to understand then in the second scenario we'll see the accusative why these are nine vexel prepositions or uh, uh, what are the scenarios that we have to use them in accusative case first we have to understand that the question of accusative is wohin wohin is always here yeah? wohin is also there but in this case you see they take the accusative when they means these prepositions they take the accusative when they describe movement from one place to another so in this case there is a movement they are not still in that case no movement here is movement from one place to another uh, for example ich stelle die flasche in den kühlschrank okay so i am the person who is putting the bottle in the fridge so i am putting the uh, bottle in the fridge so first point a it was outside and then i took the bottle and put it inside the fridge so i did a particular movement okay and that's how the bottle is inside the fridge so that's that's why we use accusative because there's a movement from one place to another this is very important to understand if you get this point then you will be able to transfer these or use this preposition according to your needs ich lege ich lege den brief auf den tisch means i put the letter on the table I put the letter, I took the letter from maybe one room, I took it and then I, I then and then I came and put it uh, onto the table, okay. So, uh, here we have used legen verb, ich lege, den brief, again accusative, der brief has become den brief of den tisch. I put the letter on the table and then the example, C, ich hänge, das Bild an die Wand. Yes, I hang that picture on the wall. So I change the moment, I change the position from A to uh, maybe first, firstly it, it was on the floor and then I put it onto the wall. Ish hanger does build and D1. So in this case it's accusative and D1 remains D1. We didn't change it to and they are one. So can you make, can you understand the difference of <clears throat> dative and accusative in accusative d1 always remains d na d1 and d1 but in dative we have changed it to an der one because that was the dative case so here guys uh, also we have course form one in das becomes ins and an das become ans so these were the two uh, major things that we have to keep in mind and this is the chart where you can clearly see the difference. Here I have given uh, an example like Tim in unzufrieden. Tim is unzufrieden. Tim is here. Yeah, T is missing. Tim is unzufrieden. Er will seine Wohnung umräumen. Maybe Tim has uh, shifted his room and now he is not satisfied uh, with his uh, furniture, maybe he wants to change, yeah, umräumen. He wants to change his uh, room. Er will seine Wohnung umräumen. So with these examples, you can understand. So what are still, where, where there is no movement and when, where there is movement, okay? You can see here, I've clearly mentioned in dative case, there's no movement. And in wohin, we have movement from one place to another. This is the only thing that you have to keep in mind and uh, for to understand better we have also the verbs that we can understand okay we have legal that means this is a dative because legal means to lie, lie down yes they are just lying with no movement and then we have hanging and then we have stehen stehen is to stand 
So first we'll go through the dative case. De tepish leet of and fus bodum. We have to construct a sentence here. De tepish leet of dame fus bodum. Der fus bodum has changed to of dame. Of dame fus bodum. The carpet is on the floor. And in the wohin case you can see we have legen. There we have legen and there we have legen. These are two different verbs. Many people uh, mix it together. But if you can see the spelling it's legen and it's legen. Le, a, legen. Legen means to put or to place. Then we have hangen. This is same. Then at the end we have stellen. Stellen is also to place something, to put or to set something. Uh, so first example we have Radha late of Fußboden. Radha late. Here we can fill something. Radha late something maybe the Zeitung, the newspaper. Where Radha late the Zeitung of den Fußboden. Radha late the Zeitung of den Fußboden. Here their Fußboden changes or takes an accusative form. So it becomes den Fußboden. Radha puts the newspaper on the floor. Then in the second example, we can see uh, I have described uh, the hangen. I have used the hangen verb. Der Spiegel hanged in comma bad. Der Spiegel hanged in dem bad. It's just hanging. There is no movement. It's hanging. It's, it's still. Yes, there is no movement as such. The mirror is hanging in the bathroom. In second say a case, Radha hanged über Schreibtisch. Radha hanged the lamp über den Schreibtisch. Now here is a doer. Doer, a person who is performing the action. In that case, it was just hanging. The mirror was just hanging in the bathroom. Yes. But in this case, Radha is a person. She is involved. She is doing some kind of action. Radha hanged the lamp über den Schreibtisch. Okay guys, so über, über den Schreibtisch, über, it's basically der Schreibtisch, masculine, and der Schreibtisch will change to den Schreibtisch. Radha hanged the lamp über den Schreibtisch. Radha hangs the lamp over the table. And then the last one, das Telefon, das Telefon steht in Wohnzimmer. Steht is just, it is there in your Wohnzimmer, uh, it's there in the bedroom. So there's no action, no movement. Das Telefon steht in dem Wohnzimmer. The telephone is in the bedroom. But here again, if you see, Radha stellt neben, comma, sofa. Radha stellt die Stehlampe neben das sofa. Yes. So Radha again has performed an action. What she did, Radha stellt. She placed or she put or she, uh, she set the steel lamp next to the sofa. She has moved it uh, next to the sofa. Uh, Radha places the lamp next to the sofa. So again, there is a movement here. So then we have the accusative case and neben das sofa, das sofa, Yes, in uh, accusative, it is always the sofa. It remains the sofa. Okay, guys. So, this was the vexed prepositions. And uh, I don't think so there's any confusion understanding this thing. It is very, very easy uh, topic. And uh, I hope you like the video. If you, uh, if you have liked the video, then please press the like button. And uh, don't forget to press the... Um, bell button so that you can receive my updated or latest uh, videos do subscribe my video share my videos with your friends who want to learn german and i will see you in the next video till then cheers